most important part of realizing that your marriage isn't going to work is it's almost like watching your car in slow motion and you know you're going to hit the wall and you can't stop it and once you hit the wall you're kind of sitting there you know kind of feeling the impact of the wall but not really understanding that you might be injured and then getting out of the car and kind of trying to assess what's actually happened and then going through the process over the next few days of what actually happened am I injured I think the beginning of the breakdown of a marriage is kind of people walk around trying to work out the confusion in their head and they start having symptoms of trauma which is sleepless nights change in appetite um, you know starting to feel unsafe when they get up in the morning having like anxiety in their stomach all the time so that, so a lot of people what they do is they go to a doctor to treat the symptom instead of actually pulling back and saying, hang on a minute, why am I anxious? Why do I have these swirling feelings in my stomach? Why am I not sleeping at night? You know, I know something's wrong. I know something's changing. And then moving into that phase where you're having those very painful discussions or somebody's leaving or moving out and learning that it's a, a journey. And I think the most important thing that I can help my clients to realize is every journey you can only take one step at a time so even though you're trying to make it go away and you're trying to feel better you have to go from step one to step two to step three which is dealing with the fact that you are actually in trauma and it's kind of like being in the middle of a hurricane and understanding that when you're in a hurricane it doesn't matter what you wear that day What's important is that you recognize that you're surviving a hurricane and you start pulling in all the things you need necessary like food, clothing and shelter to survive the hurricane. And the beginning of a divorce is kind of like that. It's learning what you need to get through each day. So is it a good friend to speak to? Is it you know a fantastic therapist that you have at the end of a phone line that you can make a phone call to? Is it with or without your family network? You know, depending on how supportive they are. Um, is it being able to be a fantastic actress or actor to to make your children feel safe? It's kind of understanding that although you're in the hurricane, you do have to pull in. Um, survival skills and survival tools to set up a way of you getting through the trauma and then being able to go to the next step of each trauma as it unfolds itself because it is a very very long long journey and a very painful journey and I think there comes a time where you have to make a choice am I going to get on and survive this or am I going to be a victim and that's a very painful choice to make and people often make a choice that's not working for them but they don't know how to change it so i think what good psychotherapy does is help you make those choices that really work for you in the long term well i think most of my clients would agree that having built a building block of tools to help them take the next step into their lives as a single person and learning to love being alone and learning to understand who they are on their own then prepares them to be in the next relationship because they're with somebody because they want to be not because they need to be and they understand who they are as a single person and feel good about being a single person and understanding how the journey took them there and what happened in their lives that got them to this point and then they're able to build from that healthy place up rather than building from anger and resentment and you know all those very painful emotions that come with the, the break down of a marriage which is really the loss of a dream and if you understand that you've lost your dream and you can put the dream to a place where you know it's very painful but I can move past that dream to another dream then you're setting up a healthy stepping stone to rebuild your life. The way I do that psychotherapy, depending on what level of crisis people are at, I like them to think of it as me building a scaffolding around them so that they start to feel a support that they've never felt before. And depending on how much support they need, it can be full scaffolding, partial scaffolding or no scaffolding. And especially going into things like mediation, which are extremely difficult. The good thing about having psychotherapy is if I'm working with my clients during a mediation, their therapy will be about that 
to help to stabilize them, to work through the issues, to help them to feel more held emotionally, to help them feel safe in going to the mediation, in sitting in the room with their ex um, husband or wife or partner or whoever it is that's in the mediation. So for me, I think psychotherapy can start ideally the earlier the better. I like to get people before they've decided whether they're ending their marriages or not. Um, because to me, you can do a lot of great work helping people understand whether or not they should stay together, which affects the impact of the divorce or separation if they're getting divorced. But a lot of people do come to me after they've gotten divorced or getting divorced. And then we start immediately with how much you know support they're going to need to stabilize them for that moment in time so that they can go through the whole very painful process feeling like somebody's holding their hand. Well, I think the most important thing for couples to realize is that the impact that they're going to have on their children getting divorced is enormous. And all the research now shows that children survive divorce and adjust well if the parents act civilly and behave as friends. So the biggest mistake a lot of parents make is they get angry, rush off to lawyers, rush off to court and start a war. And I've had children actually come into my office and draw me their parents with guns shooting each other as a representation when I do art therapy with them of how violent and how angry the parents are at each other. So I think it's quite important for parents to realize that if you create a warring situation, your children are going to become victims of a war between two parents, both of whom they love and don't want to have to choose. So it creates quite unstable environments for the children. And if the parents actually realize that creating a, a harmony of separation and showing the children that if relationships don't work, you can move into two separate happy environments where they can see a happy mom and a happy daddy and create a situation where the family can work together in harmony rather than in such a, an angry, violent situation which then affects the children at school, it affects their friendships, it affects the parents going to work. Like for example, I had one um, wife who told the husband she can only see the children from five in the afternoon until seven, but he worked in the city and usually couldn't get home before nine. So he then had to ask for a leave of absence, um, well not leave of absence, an early half day every Wednesday to leave the office by half past three to get to the kids by five o'clock to be able to see his children during the week. And that kind, so of course he became resentful because it started affecting the impact on his job. Um, she didn't care actually because they were just, she was angry that he wanted the divorce and they were just landing up when eventually got to the point where one of the children actually came into my office and said I don't actually want to live with either one of them I want to go to boarding school and this little boy was like nine years old because he literally put his hand over his ears and said I can't take this anymore you know all they do is fight and all they do is yell at each other and daddy's always angry he has to leave work and mommy's always angry that daddy left and it just becomes this very uncomfortable situation for everybody so the children are unhappy the parents are unhappy the employers are unhappy you know it starts affecting everything you know output income um, promotions bonuses you know the whole life of the family is then stuck in trauma rather than moving towards healing because the parents aren't at war. Well, the way I see psychotherapy is people bring me the jigsaw puzzle of their lives. And often, you know how when you make a jigsaw and the pieces look like they fit but they actually don't? The, I see my role as helping them take apart the pieces that really don't work and put together a new jigsaw puzzle that actually helps them achieve what they want to achieve in their life in terms of understanding you know, who they are, where they fit into themselves, how they fit into relationships, families, parenting, jobs, just situations that they are unclear of how they, they work as a person. So I kind of see that as my role, is to help them make a jigsaw puzzle that makes them feel happy and understand themselves. I started getting a reputation as being quite good in working with couples. 
and couples can come to me for all different reasons in all different phases of their marriages. And I was able to take crisis couples and work them through the journey of whether or not they wanted to stay together or not. And then if they wanted to split up, I was able to almost help them come to a place where there was no anger so they could separate and break up their assets and set up homes for their children separately or if there were no children they could part as friends and not see it as a mistake or you know kind of like a scarring but rather as an experience and a stepping stone in their lives so I think just from being referred so many couples you know we kind of developed a relationship in our practice that we're very good in couples and divorce and separation. Um, my husband's my business partner and my practice partner and he has a PhD in behavior and what we decided to try was he would take the male I would take the female and then we would do joint couple sessions to help the couple see you know, each other in a different light with a role model of a married couple that were helping them work through their marriage. And it's just been extremely successful. We've been doing it probably for the last 16 years now and have just come out with some fantastic results for people in rebuilding their lives, whether they stay married or not, which really isn't our indicator for success. Our indicator is giving them the tools of whether or not they want to stay married and if they don't then they separate without being angry so it's a different transition than you know having a very angry breakup. I had to train for I think it took me 12 years to become a qualified psychotherapist between all my internships and trainings and accreditations and getting licensed in the states um, you know, it took a long time to get that um, piece of paper that says yes you are qualified to work with people. The difference between coaching and psychotherapy is coaching touches the surface and makes more practical suggestions whereas therapy actually delves into the root, the, the way I see the difference is therapy delves into the root of the issues that are emotionally based and goes much deeper. But it's quite important that the person that you're working with has professional qualifications if you're going to do therapy because bad therapy can actually do more harm than good and you have to make sure that if somebody is a coach that they're not dabbling in the deeper intimacy of therapy because sometimes it's quite difficult to put that back together as a coach when really you need a therapist to put those pieces back together. So I think the guidelines is inquiring how much training the person's had how much experience they have in what you're looking for and then of course to make sure that you feel that somebody you can tell in your deepest darkest secrets to